Hi, this is Jeff Geisinger, and welcome to the first of our Diva for Rhino tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up a visualization in Diva, and then we'll take that visualization and open it in a program called WX False Color, where we'll generate a luminance map based on the Diva output. To start, we'll be using a Rhino file called the Reference Office, and you could download this Rhino file by accessing the link that comes with this video tutorial. And this file is basically, it contains a south-facing side-lit office with a straightforward symbol geometry, as you can see here. And the layer structure is organized uh, in an overall layer called geometry, and each component of the model is assigned to a sub-layer, such as doors, floors, and furnish furnishings. And this is important because these then get assigned materials, which Diva will use to uh, output geometry to the simulation engine, Radiance, in order to create um, precise daylight, uh, daylight modeling um, based on the optical properties of these different materials. And we'll get into that a little bit uh, in more detail in subsequent tutorials. But in order to start, after you've accessed this file, we will first uh, set up the location of the simulation by clicking on the location button in the Diva 3.0 toolbar. And that command opens up a dialog box with different climate files that are located in your C drive in the Diva folder and in a subfolder called weather data. So for this file, for this tutorial, we'll select the Boston EPW file. And when you do that, you'll, not you'll notice a couple things. It automatically generates two new groups of layers in your Rhino file, Diva Analysis Services and Diva Thermal, both of which we'll talk more about in subsequent lessons. What's also important to note is that by setting a location file, Diva automatically creates a local subdirectory uh, where your Rhino file is saved. And for instance, mine is saved on the desktop. And so if I open up Windows Explorer, you'll see that if I go to the desktop where I've saved my file, it creates a subfile called reference office, um, the name of your file, and dash diva. And in that file, there's different subdirectories where Diva will save output files such as grid-based simulations, um, visualizations, as well as your radiance file in the resources folder. Um, and I'll refer back to this uh, as we move forward. We can ignore the nodes for now because we're not doing a grid-based simulation, but the next step will be to assign materials to our file. So if I click on materials, you see there's a drop-down menu and I'm going to click the first one, Assign Materials. And this opens up another dialog box where for each layer name, there is a pull-down menu for material choices. And you see that my file is already populated. But if you select one of them, you'll see that the pull-down gives you a list of default material material settings that are um, that come with your Diva installation, and these are basically radiance materials that uh, assign different optical properties to these these uh, materials in your Rhino file. And what's important to note for these default materials in the context of this tutorial is really the, the number that comes after the name of the material. And that number is a, a percentage of reflectance. And so the higher the number, the higher the reflectance value, and the lighter it, it, will, it will be uh, in, the, in the DIVA output. So you'll see that each of these, are, each of these layers are assigned a a material and you can go ahead and assign it the um, the 
appropriate materials. So for the floor, I have generic floor, which is a reflectance value of 20. For the furnishings, generic furniture, which has a reflectance value of 50, and so forth. And once each of these are, uh, one thing I should note is that for, for glazing, the number actually that comes after the name of the material, at least in the default materials that we have with Diva, is instead of reflectance, these numbers are actually visible light transmittance values. So essentially how transparent the materials are. But that's, ju that, that's just for the ones that have glazing. The rest are reflectance values. So once these are populated and assigned, we can click Submit Material Information. So now that we've set our materials, we can run a visualization in Diva. And a visualization is usually based on perspective views that are inside the Rhino file. And it's recommended to base these visualizations off of saved views. And you'll see that the Rhino file contains some already saved perspective views on, if you go onto the Name Views tab of your Rhino file. So for example, there's uh, an outside uh, view called Perspective and then an interior view called Room View Back. And we'll, we'll um, do our visualization, our actual visualization and then our false color based on this interior view. But it's always recommended before running an interior view or a daylight simulation to check your geometry through a visualization uh, from an exterior view just to make sure that you've, you've modeled everything correctly. So I'll actually just run a quick test on this perspective view, on this outside view, which is the one that we see here. So if I double click it, it's, um, it's the saved view here. And when I'm ready to run my test, I go ahead and I click on uh, metrics. And that brings up a dialog box. And the dialog box contains three, three tabs in the top, images, grid-based, and thermal. And for now, we'll click on daylight images. And then under daylight images, there are also some sub-tabs. And for our purposes, we'll use visualization. And you'll see that there is a op there, there's the option to assign an image quality. And these basically are associated with different radiance parameters that improve the quality of your image, but it also sacrifices simulation time. So for the purposes of this simulation, we'll just go ahead and use low quality. You can also assign a sky condition to your simulation. And there's different choices between clear sky, overcast sky, custom sky, and so forth. And for the purposes of this more simple tutorial, we'll just go ahead and click clear sky with sun. And also you're prompted to assign a date and time for your visualization. And the default is usually the um, fall equinox at nine in the morning. And and you could also assign a camera type, so you want to leave that as perspective. And then for select camera views, we'll, we will use current perspective view because that's uh, the view that we want from the outside. We can leave everything else the same, leave the image size as the defaults. We'll open it with WX false color, which I will talk about, and everything else we can leave as the defaults. So when we're ready to just run this test, I go ahead and click Run Simulation. And the command line will come up, and Diva will run a radiance simulation to bring up an image of our scene. And Diva automatically opens up the visualization that we've we've created in a program called WX False Color, which is part of the Diva install. It is a um, it is a program that comes along with uh, Radiance. And so you'll see that the model is viewed correctly and we see our walls, our facades, our roof, um, the outside ground and some shadows on the inside. We don't see shadows on the outside because they're actually occluded by um, our building. So we can now switch to an interior view. So now we'll go ahead and highlight the perspective view and double click in the Named Views tab on the interior view called Room View Back. And it changes that perspective view to this interior scene. 
And then we'll go ahead and click on metrics and repeat the steps that we did uh, for our test. So I'll go ahead and run the, simula the simulation for the same, um, with the same settings and it will run. And when the simulation is completed, again, it opens up the, resulted, the resulting image in WX false color. Here it's from our vantage point of the interior view. And you'll see that uh, it's an image in black and white based on the optical properties of the materials that we've assigned for the different components of the scene. And since there is no color assigned, these are all in black and white. And if I click anywhere on the image, you'll see that WX false color assigns labels to the different luminance values for each pixel in the scene. And it assigns a label based on this text box, which is defaulting to candelas per meter squared, which is a, a measure of luminance. And I can click clear labels in order to remove those labels and so I could reassign them as I, as I wish and then hit clear labels to get rid of them. So in order to show the full luminance range of this image, we can convert it into a false color. And so to do that, we in WX false color, on the left under the false color tab, we just expand it where the arrow is. and we can assign different settings in, or, uh, in order to tell it how to represent the image in different colors. And so we'll leave it as color fill in this first option. We can leave these defaults the way that they are. And hit convert false color on the bottom of the false color tab. And after a few seconds, it will change the image to false color map um, it'll automatically put a legend based on the the height in pixels and then the, the width here on the left. And you'll see that it, if I click anywhere in the image, it's still going to give me the, the luminance values for uh, the, cor the corresponding luminance values for each pixel, but it maps the image with a range of colors that gives us the that full um, range of luminance values for the entire image. And then once we are happy with this image, we can click Save Bitmap, which actually saves the entire image uh, with the labels in place. Or we can click Save Image to save this uh, without the labels, but uh, save it as a different extension, um, such as PNG or TIFF. Now if I navigate to where I save my Rhino file, which is on the desktop, you'll see that Diva creates a, a project, a local project folder in the same location where you save your Rhino file. So in my case, it's on the desktop and the name of the file is, the name of the folder matches the name of my Rhino file and it has a Diva tag at the end of it. So I click on that folder and I notice that it has a series of subfolders which is the way that Diva organizes um, its output files. And if I click on visualizations, you'll see that there are two um, .pick files th that are based on the two visualizations that I ran, one for the perspective view and one for the interior view. So whenever I want to go back to my, um, my visualization that I created in Diva, I can, I can navigate to this local project folder and click on this file to, again, open it up in WX false color. That wraps things up for this first tutorial. In the next session, we will go over how to set up a daylight autonomy analysis. Thanks a lot.